So today we're talking about can you gain muscle with light weights? The answer, by the way, just to answer the question right away, yes, you can gain muscle with light weights. But it's sort of an interesting discussion to be had, and we're going to investigate two studies on the matter. So stick around. We're also going to talk about how to implement them into your training and the positives and negatives of training with light weights. So the first study, Bird et al. from 2010, they compared three different groups. So they had a 30% group, a 90% group, and then a 30% group that did the same amount of work as the 90% group. Now, for most people, if you lifted weights, you'll know that you can do more total work with a lighter weight. So what they did was they matched the 90 and the 30%, and then they had a 30% group that just kept going until failure. And the results are actually very, very interesting. Four hours post-exercise, there was the most muscle protein synthesis in the 90% group. However, 24 hours post-exercise, the most muscle protein synthesis was actually with the 30% to failure group. So the 30% to failure group had a longer lasting stimulus of muscle protein synthesis, which is pretty interesting. And even more interestingly, the 30% weights 24 hours post-exercise stimulated both the myofibrillar hypertrophy, but also the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So the first is the actual muscle fiber, and the second is almost like the fuel tank surrounding that muscle fiber. And the 30% weights stimulated both more than the heavy weights at least 24 hours post-exercise, which is honestly amazing honestly pretty mind-blowing and i don't think many people would have predicted this outcome so i know some of you are probably thinking well this is just one incidence this isn't a long-term study it's just doing a workout and then measuring the reaction to this one workout it doesn't actually apply to what we are doing in the gym and so actually two years later there was another study that had a 10 week protocol and they actually measured results before and after and not just how much muscle growth was stimulated but how much muscle growth actually occurred over this two and a half month period so they split these people into three groups group one did 30 percent of their one rep max to failure for three sets group two did 80 percent of their one rep max just for one set to failure and then the third group did 80 percent to failure for three sets. And as you can see here, the 30% for three sets and the 80% for three sets, the muscle growth is almost identical. It was 6.8% and 7.2%. So almost exactly the same. They gained almost exactly the same amount of muscle using baby weights or some pretty respectable poundage. It didn't matter. They gained roughly the same amount of muscle. Now this 80% group for one in the middle is actually pretty interesting because it shows that intensity, the absolute poundage, is not going to be nearly as important as the volume. So the number of sets was what really mattered as well as going close to failure. And we saw this from the first study. The group that didn't go quite to failure, that 30% work equated group, didn't quite get the same results as going to failure. So if you're going to lift light weights, you've got to go to failure or at least very very close to failure one thing to keep in mind is that these are beginners they're doing leg extensions which I don't really think is a good study but it's all we have um, and they're going to volitional failure so this means you are failing when you choose to stop you know maybe gun to your head you could have done more reps but you're just like in this study and they paid you some money and like They'll just say, you know, stop when you want to stop, stop when you fail. And so they're beginners and they're not going to train that hard. And they're not going to you know, train harder than last time. And so this might not apply to all people. And if you train even closer to failure, to actual real failure, you might get better results. Or you might get worse results. We just don't know. Uh, the, the data on failure is not 100% clear. Some studies say it helps. Some studies say it's not necessary. Some studies say if you keep two or three reps in the tank, it's better. Some states say you have to go to failure. Uh, it's really not 100% clear. But what is clear is that you can gain muscle with very, very light weights. I mean, 30% of your one rep max, that is baby weight. I mean, just for reference, for me, on the deadlift, that's like 60 kilos. Um, for the overhead press, 
that is basically the bar <laughs> and nothing else. And it's, it's a weight that you could probably do 30, 40, 50, maybe even 60 reps. So it is very, very lightweight. It won't even really be challenging for the first 30, 40, even 50 seconds. You'll start getting that burning feeling, that pump, uh, that sort of sensation in your muscles where you just want to stop. Maybe the bar speed is still good, but you feel like you want to die. And, you know, this is the kind of thing where this is a negative. Let's get into this. This is a definitely a negative of training with super light weights. If you're doing a an 8 rep max or a 6 rep max or a 12 rep max even, you probably won't get that burning sensation for most people. But if you're doing a 20, a 25, a 30, uh, a few of these sets I did here were like a 50 or a 60 rep max. And yeah, you're definitely going to get a very, very uncomfortable sensation near the end of that set. And if you don't, you're a genetic freak or you're probably not training very hard. You're using way too light of weights. But if you're training with light weights close to failure, actual failure, uh, it's going to be very, very unpleasant. Another negative of very light weights is that you won't build your strength. So strength is very neurological, it's based on technique, it's skill based, uh, it's based on practice, and if you're using 80% weights, you can absolutely improve your strength. But below 60%, probably not. And 30%, no way, it's not going to do very much for your strength. Maybe on a leg extension, as you can see here, their strength did go up a little bit, but these are complete beginners, and a leg extension does not take very much skill. In fact, I can't think of an exercise that uses less skill than a leg extension. If it's something like a squat, you need to experience heavy weight to get better at lifting heavy weight. Another negative is the mind-muscle connection. You really do need to focus on the muscles involved if you're doing these high reps. If you're just like swinging the weight or you're not really contracting the muscle, you probably won't get very much out of it. You really do need to focus on what you're doing. Also, you basically have to go quite close to failure or you'll, you'll get basically no benefit from it. Uh, whereas with heavier weights, you'll still get benefit uh, just because it is heavy. But if it's light, you got to push close to failure, which again is very, very uncomfortable and can burn and feel really, really bad. Furthermore, this type of training can cause soreness, a lot of soreness. Uh, if you're doing a bunch of sets of three or four or five, yeah, you might get a little sore. But if you're doing multiple sets of 40 or 50 to failure, oh my lord, my hamstrings are still sore, my biceps are sore, uh, my triceps are sore, a lot of my body is sore just from doing these high rep sets. My wrists, my, uh, my forearms as well, um, it, it just creates a lot of muscle damage and a lot of disruption to that area. Also keep in mind that not every exercise can be done for high reps. If you're doing front squats for high reps, probably not a great idea. If you're doing Olympic lifting for high reps, definitely not a good idea. And if you say like, well, they do it in CrossFit, yeah, I'm calling CrossFit stupid. Okay, so don't justify a movement by saying CrossFit does it, because that is the worst justification ever. And if you try to do that, I'm going to yell at you, okay? So don't do it. Finally, and I don't have a study to back this up, it's just personal experience, this type of training, it doesn't work over a very long period of time. It, is, it works very well, very quickly, but your body adapts to it equally quickly. So if you want to put on some quick size, yeah, do a few higher rep sets, you'll get a great pump, you'll get increased glycogen storage, you'll get increased work capacity, uh, you'll just have a lot more bloat in that area, for lack of a better word, and you, you might see some nice gains. But don't train that way all the time. Cycle it in, cycle it out. Uh, I would say your bread and butter should be a more moderate rep range. Let's move on to the positive. So one positive is that it helps develop a mind-muscle connection. Now I know that I put this as a negative sort of, but if you apply your mind, this can actually be a huge positive and you can learn to feel certain muscles. When I'm bench pressing for sets of like five or 10, I don't feel my chest. And often I don't even get sore in my chest. I'll get sore in my shoulders or my triceps. But if I do sets of 30, really trying to squeeze the peps, pecs and <laughs> peps? squeeze the pecs, feel everything retracted, feel everything, all the tension going to the right area, I will feel it in my chest a lot more. So for a lot of people, you can use higher reps to develop a mind-muscle connection with a certain body part that you might have trouble doing with a more moderate rep range. Also, you are burning more calories because you're doing more work, but 
to be honest, the difference is going to be very, very small. If you are weightlifting to burn calories, that is a terrible, terrible decision. It also can perhaps double as a form of high intensity cardio. If you're doing sets of 30, 40, 50 in the squat or the deadlift or some other lower body or full body movement, your heart rate is definitely going to be way, way up there. And if you don't like cardio, this can be a good option. Finally, and this brings me to the greatest benefit of all, so I'm glad you stuck around for almost the entire video. Don't leave now, what are you doing? Don't click away. Your joints, they don't light up your joints. So joint health is incredibly important and the limiting factor for lifting weights is almost always the joints. And doing lighter weight for higher reps not only is easier on the joints, but it can actually heal your joint. So if you have a bad back, doing back extensions on a regular basis for 40, 50, 60, 100 reps, that's going to get a ton of blood flow into the area and can actually help the healing process. It can speed it up and make it a lot more efficient. I know this sounds like bro science, and maybe it is bro science, but it absolutely works. There was a famous study by Brad Schoenfeld, I forget the year, but he compared seven sets of three with heavy, heavy weight to three sets of 10 with lighter weight. And of course the muscle growth was very similar. Volume was equated and thus growth was the same. However, when asked after the study, you know, which group felt better, the group with lighter weights felt much better. They had much less joint pain and they got the same amount of muscle growth. So in the long term, using lighter weights, at least occasionally, can be a very, very good strategy. In terms of how to implement this into your training, first of all, don't be afraid of it impacting your strength. It might a little bit in the very short term, but tons of strength athletes do higher reps. I think it is a myth that they really hurt your strength and it shouldn't have any kind of meaningful impact in the long term. Yeah, if you do a set of 50 to failure and then you try to max out afterwards, yeah, you might be like 5 or 10% weaker. But in the long term, if you get used to this, if you build your work capacity, it won't be an issue. If you look at like Larry Wheels, he did 225 for like 60 reps, 80 reps, and he's still a monster. So it's not like he got weaker from doing super high reps. All right, that is all for today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in that next video. Peace.